بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, we continue uh, talking about vectors and uh, I'm going to uh, do talk about vector operations vectors operations like uh, scalars where you add scalars subtract scalars you can multiply scalars you can divide scalars similarly we have operation for vectors we can add vectors we can subtract vectors we can multiply vectors so I'm going to talk about this type of operations but in vectors operation are more much more difficult than scalar operations uh, there are two ways to uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about here about vector additions and subtractions vectors additions and subtractions okay so in vector additions there are two ways to do vector additions you can either use what we, what we call the graphical method the graphical method of adding vectors or we use what is called the analytical method okay and the analytical method is generally the one which is heavily used in this uh, course the graphical method there are two ways to do graphical method either we use what is called the tail to tip addition or the parallelogram the parallelogram method okay of adding vectors now a vector as was uh, mentioned in the previous uh, video a vector can be represented by a magnitude and a direction so this vector here the length of this line will represent the magnitude and the arrow represents is going to represent the direction so this vector is directed toward the right okay we call this vector a and we always put an arrow on the top to distinguish between vectors and scalars the scalars they don't have the arrow the vector will have an arrow on the top which means this is if I put an arrow on this letter A it means this is a vector and vector is always defined by magnitude and direction so if you give the magnitude alone it's, it's not enough if you give the direction without the magnitude it's not, enough, it's not enough you have to give magnitude and direction so this vector has a magnitude which is the length of this line and the direction is the arrow and this vector by the way I can move it in this space by keeping the same magnitude and same direction I can take it anywhere I want I will not change the vector okay then I have another vector which call, I call it vector B and I put it like this and vector B let's take it it has a smaller magnitude than vector A and a different direction and this is the vector B it has an arrow on the top eh? so vectors are always they have arrows and I want to add these two vectors we call this point here the tail of the vector and we call this point the, this arrow here the head so a vector has a tail and has a head so the tail to head or tip we also call it tip we call it also head the tail to head method to head method is for, this, for adding vectors is I'm going to bring the vector B move it keeping the direction the same and the magnitude the same and bring it here so that so that uh, the tail of B will coincide with the head of A okay so I'm going to bring the vector B here and put it here like this that, so this is my vector B okay then to add these two vectors okay I'm doing A plus B here remember I'm doing and this will be uh, going to give me a vector which is called a vector C okay uh, to add them graphically to get the vector C you go from the tail of vector A to the head of vector B you join like this and this is my vector C okay so the vector C now is this addition of vector A and vector B uh, the parallelogram method is similar to the, the the tail to head to head method but I will show you now how to do it so this is my vector a again I'm going to draw vector a again 
and the vector B, I'm not going to bring it to the to the head of A, I'm going to bring it to the tail of A and draw again the vector B like this. Okay? So this is my vector B. As I told you, we can move vectors anywhere we want as long as we keep the magnitude and the direction the same. This will not affect the vector. Now, if I do that, if I, if I bring the tail of B to the tail of A and then I draw I'm going to do some drawing now. I'm going to draw the parallel line to A and the parallel line to B and then I'm going to join again the tail where the tails meet to the intersection of the two lines. I'm going to join like this and this will be my vector C again. And we notice if we have a ruler or, and we are keeping the dimension the same, that the, the, this this length is exactly this length, and this direction is exactly the, the, this direction here. So vector C through this method and vector C through this method are exactly the same. We call this tail-to-head method, and we call this the parallelogram method. And this is how you add vectors graphically. Okay? Uh, this vector C here, which is the addition of vector A and B, is generally called the resultant. And we will be using this word a lot in this course. We, ha we can have the resultant of a velocity vector. It could be a force, a resultant of net, we call it net force also, or resultant, okay? So this vector C is called the resultant. Now, I want to uh, show you how to subtract vectors. This is the addition of vectors. I'm going to talk about subtraction. Imagine I have a vector A minus B. And this will give me a vector D, which is different, of course, from the vector C here. Eh? Because here we are adding, and here we are subtracting. We can write this, actually, as A plus minus B, which is equal to D, right? So we can add A to minus B. So let's see what is minus B. Our vector B is here, as you can see it. And I'm going to show you how to write, how to draw minus B. Minus B will be a vector with the same, exactly the same magnitude, but opposite direction, which means in this case it will be inverted. So my vector A will be the same as the vector A here, and my vector minus B will be as the vector which is this. So this is minus B. And I'm going to add them using the same way, the same method, which is the, let's say, tail, tail to tip method, okay? So I bring the vector B, the tail of B, to the head of A, and I draw it here. So this is my minus B, and I'm going to add them. I'm going to add, add what? Add A and minus B. So I will get a vector C, D, which will be going like this. This is my vector D, which is equal to A minus B. And we notice that D is not equal to C. It's completely different. It's a, it has a, this probably, it has the same magnitude as C, but it has a different direction. And this is how you do a subtraction of vector using the graphical method. Now you can also uh, multiply a vector by a scalar. You can multiply a vector by a scalar now. So I have vector A, which has this length and this direction, and let's see how you draw a vector which is 2a. 2a, it means I'm multiplying, multiplying the, the vector a by a scalar, and the scalar in, in this case is 2. It's not always 2. It could be minus 5. It could be plus 10. This, uh, this is just an example, okay? So uh, 2a will be a vector which has the same... That it is, it's another vector. I'm going to call it f, okay? And this vector f has exactly the same direction as vector a, but it has twice the magnitude. It means it has twice the length of this vector here. So this is vector A and this is 2A and this might, will be my vector F which is exactly equal to twice the length of A and the same direction. If I have a vector now minus 2A a minus 2A will be exactly equal to in magnitude as this vector but it will have the opposite direction. And this is how you multiply a vector by a scalar. 
Another way of uh, adding, subtracting vectors or multiplying a vector by a scalar is by doing what is called the analytical method. We have seen in a previous video that we can represent the vector by its components along the x, y, and z uh, axis you, by using what is called the unit vector notation. So imagine I have a vector a, okay, which has a component axi plus another component ay, j, and a third component a, z, k. So this ax, ay, and az are the components of vector a along the x, y, and z axis. Then I have another vector b, which has a component uh, bxi, it has a component bxi plus by, j, plus b, z, k. Now remember that this, this ax, ay, and az can be positive, negative, or zero. Okay, it's very important. If I want to add these two vectors, adding them, analytical method is, will be a vector c, as you know, we have seen that, it will be a vector c, which is the addition of th these two vectors. And the way to do it is to add the x component together. So I will have ax plus bx, i plus ay, by, j plus az plus b, z, k. So the, the idea is to add the x component together, the y component together, and the z component together, and get a new vector. Now this here, this part here, we call it cx, which is the component of vector c along the x-axis. This is the resultant vector, by the way. We call it the resultant vector, and this is the x component of the vector c along the x-axis. Similarly, this is a, this here, this here is the y component of vector uh, c, and this is the z component of vector c. So the addition of these two vectors gave me a new vector which has the component cx along the x-axis, cy along the y-axis, and cz along the z-axis. If you want to subtract the two vectors, if you want to do a minus b, okay, or b minus a, so a minus b, a minus b, in this case, a minus b will be another vector we call it we called it d if you remember there was a vector d here and this is the analytical method here again we have to subtract ax minus bx i plus ay minus by j plus az minus b z again these are the components of the vector d along the x-axis, along the y-axis, and along the z-axis. So this is how you add vectors or you subtract vectors using what is called, what we call the analytical method, using what, is, what we call the unit vector notation. Okay?